In Thailand, you can get an endless supply of the latest computer software, nearly all of it pirated. Halfway across the world in Brazil, different marketplace, same story. Street vendors openly selling pirated DVDs and software from makeshift top haulin stores. Software piracy is so common that the vendors barely take any notice of the police patrols. As soon as they've turned the corner, they set their stalls up again. Supply meets demand in countries where the average office worker would have to work for more than a month to be able to legally afford basic software. The World Summit for the Information Society in Tunisia, a global meeting of key decision makers in IT or information technology from around the globe, promoting their wares, exchanging ideas and trying to change the world. They have one thing in common with the software pirates. For just as the pirates are illegally making software affordable, the UN Secretary General and many of the delegates here also want to make the software affordable for the digitally deprived, but legally. Technological visionary Nicholas Negroponte's $100 laptop aims to put affordable computing technology in the hands of millions of schoolchildren in the most needed parts of the world. And the software that's going to be used on this? We've chosen free and open software because it's better and because it means that the children can actually participate in making the software even better over time. We believe completely in community-developed software as well as content. Free and open source software, or FOSS, is the latest phenomena in computing and is causing turbulence in the proprietary or commercial software world. Widely used software, such as Thunderbird and OpenOffice, can be downloaded legally and used by anyone without having to pay for it. Over 90% of all the world's desktop and laptop computers run on proprietary software, such as Apple or Microsoft cells. Do they see open source as a threat? I think the challenge it presents to Microsoft is it just reminds us that customers do have choice. And that when you're reminded that customers have choice, and we always need to be reminded of that, it reminds us that they have to go back to work, you have to listen to your customers. You have to invest the $6 billion of R&D that we'll invest this year in ways that are going to meet the needs of those customers. So is open source the bridge for the now famous digital divide? Will innovations such as the $100 computer working on free, unlicensed software bring a billion extra users online? In the Code Breakers, we find out if open source is all it's cracked up to be. And can it be the bridge for the digital divide? One can consider open source software a lot like generic drugs. The analogy fits. In the case of open source software, it's a lot less expensive. And for that reason, it's essentially the same product. It does the same thing on a computer, but it costs less. There are estimated to be over 100,000 open source projects being developed. Not one cent was paid by the computer users who have downloaded 50 million copies of the Firefox browser from the internet. It was developed from Netscape by the non-profit Mozilla Foundation. It now has a 20% share of the European and a 14% share of the US market. Apache, the open source web server software, is used by more than 60% of all websites on the internet, including web giants Google and Amazon. So is a revolution underway? Are the days of proprietary software numbered and now that software has become free and open, will the digital chasm between the poor and rich be closed? Only middle-aged academics will remember that more than two decades ago, when computers first reached universities, software source code was freely passed around and programmers expected to be paid for programming and not for the programs themselves. Then things changed as computers reached the business world and companies began to develop and license software on a commercial basis, restricting access to the source code. In 1984, Richard Stallman, one of the original computer whiz questioned the commercial software company's actions and started what he called the free software movement. What can I do? I had no political party behind me, I couldn't expect to convince governments or corporations to change any of their policies. 
but I did know how to write software. So I said, I'm going to develop another operating system and with the help of whoever will join in, and together we will make it free software. We will respect your freedom. Richard Stallman came up with his own license for free software, which incorporated what he described as the four freedoms. Freedom zero is the freedom to run the program as you wish. Freedom one, the freedom to help yourself. That's the freedom to study the source code and change it to do what you wish. Then there's freedom two, the freedom to help your neighbor. That's the freedom to make copies and distribute them to others when you wish. And freedom three is the freedom to help your community. That's the freedom to publish or distribute a modified version when you wish. If you have all, all four, four of these freedoms, essential freedoms, the program is free software. Free software. Free software. The next development came in 1991. A 21-year-old Finnish computer programmer, Linus Torvalds, developed what is known as the kernel, the core of the operating system, and called it Linux. Its proponents boast it can operate as well on a mobile phone as on a supercomputer. And Torvalds' invention can be downloaded without paying anyone anything. According to the Linux Counter, a pro-open source website, there are estimated to be up to 29 million computers using Linux. But since it is not sold, there are no sales figures on which to base data. I haven't heard of FOSS at all. No, I've never heard of FOSS. I'm afraid I've no idea what FOSS is. I have heard of free and open software. <laughs> uh, no, never heard of FOSS. No, I, I've never heard of FOSS. I, I don't know what it is. I've never heard of FOSS. I do not know what, what was it? Yes, I have heard of free and open source software, and uh, I do have some of those products on my computer at the moment. 